Hello and welcome. Before you watch this video, try the problem on your own. Okay, in this problem it tells us that the vertex of a parabola represented by f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 3 has the coordinates 2, comma, negative 1. Find the coordinates of the vertex of the parabola defined by g of x equals f of x minus 2. Explain how you arrived at your answer. Okay, so this is a function transformation problem, and there are many ways to solve it. We'll look at three of them. Um, and the first is the one I recommend least, but I think it's good to have in the back of your mind. Um, so here, they tell us that we're dealing with f of x minus 2, right? And function transformations, um, or translations specifically in this case, uh, will slide or translate your shape in uh, four different ways, up, down, left, or right. So we have function transformations and we just want to be our translations I guess we'll say translations mean sliding um, and that's what we're dealing with here the bigger topic is function transformations and obviously the only way you can really slide a shape is in some combination of up or down left or right or some combination of that so to move a function to uh, let's say let's go up first you take whatever you have f of x close parentheses and then you add one to it and that makes sense, right? You have f of x is your output. If you add 1 or any n value, we'll say, to your output, that moves the function up, or the outputs up, n spaces. Likewise, we can move it down n spaces by subtracting f of x minus n. Now, to go right and left, things might be a little bit trickier, but we'll, we'll break it down to think about it. To move to the right n spaces, we take our function f of x and then subtract 1, right, in the output right there. And then to move left n spaces, we take f of x plus n. Now, the, the minus and the plus here are not so much about the outputs, right, but the but the inputs, right? So here, essentially, I'll say it this way, we're moving to the right here, um, the function will shift to the right, excuse me, because we're using inputs um, bef lower than whatever we're plugging in. So if we plug in some x value, you're going to subtract from it. So you're going to, to shift to the right because you're actually low, you're reaching back to inputs earlier on in the function, which will reach your outputs even sooner. And likewise, the opposite's having happening here. You're going to the left um, because you're reaching outputs further on in the process by raising the inputs you, you run in. Now with the left and right, um, I'm actually not going to put words to it to explain the logic because every time I attempt to ex explain it in words, I feel like I jumble it up. And probably the best way to go forward is to show you two other ways of solving this. So in other words, um, you could memorize this. It, it, memorizing, of course, is the weakest way of learning any problem. But it's good to have in the back of your mind that what's going to be happening here with g of x, which they say equals f of x minus 2, right? Um, that just tells us here that whatever f of x is, right, it, we're going to take it and shift it twice to the right, right? two to the right. And that is going to give us the picture of f of x minus two. Right? We're shifting to the right. And you don't have to memorize that because we could see it happening um, by graphing or using a table and we'll do both. Okay, so let's analyze this thing um, in a table because I want you to understand how these functions actually develop and not just memorize uh, what's going on here. So we're going to look at a couple of inputs and outputs in our table. We we'll use x for our input, and we have two outputs, f of x, and then eventually we'll look at g of x, which we know equals f of x minus 1. So in our table, we'll plug in a couple of values for x to get a sense of what's happening. We'll graph those values and talk about how that relates uh, g of x to f of x. So we know vertex, the vertex is a key point. They're giving us the vertex is 2, negative 1. So one of our inputs should definitely be 2. And if you remember, with a vertex, uh, here we have a, a quadratic function, uh, which means x is being squared. So that means whatever our graph is, is going to be some kind of parabola. Maybe like this, a frown, let's say, or like this, a smile. And the vertex is the turning point of each parabola. 
So it's this critical point that we're going to definitely want to use here to understand what's going on. Let's do a few points below it and above it. Let's do 1 and 0 below it, and then 3 and 4 above it. And that might give us enough to graph these things. So we're going to plug in 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 into f of x, write the outputs here, and look at that graph, and they'll do the same to g of x to make sense of what's happening. So, uh, you know, when you plug in uh, these values for x, you can do it quicker on your graphing calculator, I'll show that. Uh, but I like to do it by hand, nice and slow. That's just lo the way I like to work. All right, so our function, I'll write it over here. I don't like to clutter up my table. f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. So we want to know what f of 0 is, f of 1 is, f of 2 is, equals, right, what those equal, f of 3, and f of 4. And don't worry, this won't take long at all. So when we plug in 0, we get 0 squared minus 4 times 0, which is 0, plus 3, and the output is 3. So when we plug in 0, our f of 0 equals 3. All right, that's a point, 0, 3, on the graph. If we plug in 1, we get 1 squared minus 4 plus 3. That's 1 minus 4, negative 3, plus 3, 0. So we plug in 1, our output is 0. If we plug in 2, we get 2 squared minus 8, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3. So that's 4 minus 8, that's negative 4, plus 3 is negative 1. So we plug in 2, our output is negative 1. If we plug in 3, we get 3 squared minus 12, 4 times 3 is 12, plus 3. So we get 9 minus 12, negative 3, plus 3 is 0. Right. So we can see that 1 and 3 both have the same outputs of 0. That's because they're symmetrical around the vertex. right? So if our graph is like this, right? here's our vertex. The point you'll see 1, 0, and 1, 0 will be over here, sorry. 1, 0 and 3, 0 have the same height. They're symmetrical around the vertex. And we're going to suspect that 4 and 0 also have a height of 3 because they're going to be symmetrical around the vertex. So as we're working with these parabolas, when you know the vertex, you can really use that symmetry to your advantage. So here, 4 squared minus 16 plus 3. That's 16 minus 16 plus 3 is 3. So that also has a height of 3. So let's graph this and see what it looks like. Okay. Let me just shift this around a little bit. Okay. So these points, we can plot them really quickly on the graph. 0, 3. Right, when x is 0, it gives us our y-intercept, 0, 3, 1, 0, here, 2, negative 1, and then 3, 0, and 4, 3. So I feel like, you know, you can do a couple more points if, if you want to get graded uh, perfectly on this. I think we can get away with it here. You might want to plug in uh, x is negative 1, right, and you see that, sh that value shoot up because negative 1 squared is 1 minus a negative 4 is positive is adding 4 to 1. So it's 5 plus 3 is 8. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then this point right here will be symmetrical. right? So here you can connect these. The parabola is going to go on forever. And I think it's a good habit to try to curve it as nicely as you can through those points. And then label this point to negative 1, your vertex. And then label this as um, f of x. So g of x is not minus 1, excuse me, minus 2. Put minus 1 there. It's minus 2. So according to the outline that I gave you in the beginning, we should see the graph shift to the right twice. Right? So all of these points will go to the right twice, and the whole graph will shift to the right. Let's see why that happens as we plug this into our table. Okay. So I'm going to skip the first case for a moment. I'll come back to that. Um, here, our input is 1. So what does g of x equal? Well, it equals f right, of x minus 2, right, so it's x is 1, we're plugging in 1, minus 2, so that means that this equals f of negative 1, right, so what does f of negative 1 equal, well, we don't have that input here, so let's get it, right, let's just shift this all down, Now we figured out f of uh, negative 1 on the graph, but we can do it again. If we plug in negative 1, f of negative 1 does equal 8, right? You can do the negative 1 squared plus 4, so it's 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 3 is 8. So here, when we have um, an input of 1, g of x is equal 
to what f of negative 1 equaled, and that's 8. Okay, so you see that uh, what essentially just happened was when we use an input of 1, this function grabs the output for, for 2 before it, right? In other words, right here. Two, two whole number steps before it. It shifts it back to, it reaches back twice to an earlier input. It's reaching back in time, so to speak. So the next one, when f is x is 2, we have f of 2 minus 2, or f of 0. Okay? So here, if we plug in 2, our output's going to equal uh, f of 0. It's going to go back two steps there in the graph. So f of 0, here it is, is 3. And then we keep going. So it goes 8, 3. And now you can see that we can just grab these values here. It's going to go 8, and then 3, and then 0, and then um, negative 1, right? So these are points that we can plot on our graph as well. I'll plot them, let's say, in purple. So here, what are the points we have? We have the point 1, 8. So 1, 8 is here. So you can see that 1, 8 shifted to the right twice. And then 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. You can see that 0, 3 shifted over twice to the right. And three zeros here. Our vertex is now has moved over as well. So it's 4, negative 1. So 2, 3, 4, negative 1 here. And then notice they tell us that the use of the axes is optional. I guess they're saying that you don't have to graph this. You can explain how you're doing it by continuing the table. But you can also explain it by keep continuing to shift all of these points t twice to the right all the corresponding points that you plotted. So here's g of x, badly graphed by me, sorry about that. So g of x is f of x shifted twice to the right. Um, so we use a table, right? We use the graph, we use this overall like general rule strategy, but there are other ways to do it as well, many other ways. Let me show you one more because maybe you didn't like this approach. Um, another great way to do this, let me just try to memorize it, oh, let me grab this formula. We have Copy that, and then we'll work down here for a minute. Okay, just get this up. Okay, so here's another way of thinking about it that you might like. So g of x equals f of x minus 2. Okay, so to understand what g of x equals, we can take um, f of x minus 2 and analyze it algebraically. So remember that what's inside the parentheses is your input. So f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. So f of x minus 2, now, well, x minus 2, that whole expression is your input. So we get x, instead of x squared, you have x minus 2 squared. Minus 4 times x minus 2 instead of times x plus 3. If we simplify this, we get the graph for x, f of x minus 2. So we have x minus 2 squared. We'll write that out so we can multiply it. We distribute the negative 4, so negative 4x. Negative 4 times negative 2 is plus 8, plus 3. Okay. And then here we get x squared, right? x times x is x squared, minus 2x, minus 2x is minus 4x, and we add them, and positive 4. So now we're going to combine like terms and simplify. Um, so here, we have f of x minus 2 equals what? x squared, it cannot be combined in any like terms, minus 8x, right, minus 4x minus 4x, and then we have 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 8 is 15, so plus 15. So this, if you want to graph this right here, that would also get you the graph of x, f of x minus 2. What's particularly nice about this strategy is that, um, Suppose that you have some kind of input like f of 5x um, minus 2 over x, right? Something really weird. I don't even know what this would do. We could play around with it right now. I'm kind of curious, actually. Um, but whatever you're given, instead of being like, oh, no, I don't actually know my rules for that, what goes on there, um, or if you don't want to set up a table to discover the rules, you could simply plug this in as your input and then evaluate um, the polynomial that results. And that would still allow you to determine what's going to happen. So you can always use what's inside those parentheses and input it into your function as the variable to analyze it. Um, now, like I said, you can use the graphing calculator as well 
to analyze this, and that's this is what I meant was you can plug this bit into the y equals part of the graphing calculator, right? If you go to y equals right here, clear out any functions you have, right? What you could do is enter it in x to the second power, press to the right, minus 8x plus 15, and then graph it. You'll see the parabola there. And what's nice about this is if you hit second table, right, you get a, a list of all the values, um, the whole number of values in this case. I'm sure you can change an increment um, from, from some, something else if you want to plot this thing. So you could set this thing up uh, quickly on the graphing calculator, right, by inputting x minus 2 as your variable, going to y equals, right, setting it up. And then you can see on the graph, but I like to hit second graph because you get actual table values th uh, that you can plot as points to make a picture of what's happening. All right, I hope this helped.